Hey everyone, Matt Pisarsik from God Damn It. <laughs> uh, hey everyone, Matt Pisarsik from RazorEmporium.com. While I'm restoring vintage razors, I'm checking out Mustache and Blade. Play, 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 play. Welcome to the Mustache and Blade podcast, a show dedicated to all things facial fur and traditional wet shaving in an effort to create global facial awareness. And now, here are your hosts. Douglas Smythe and Ryan Stephen Green. And I am Douglas Smythe of HowToGrowMustache.com. And this is the irrepressible Ryan Stephen Green. And today's show is brought to you by the How To Grow Mustache Store. That's HowToGrowMustacheStore.com, where you can find Synergy Shaving Soap as well as many other accessories now that we've just added to the page. So please check that out at HowToGrowMustacheStore.com. You are in store for a really fun show today. We will have Todd Cerami of Mr. Fine Accruitments. You will hear him speak of all things that stink. <laughs> and I mean that in the nicest way. We will also have some tips from Mantic. We will also be having a little review by me, more of a pseudo review tutorial inspiration type thing on Franken razors. But before we get into this, I just want to remind you that if you have any questions about wet shaving, or mustaches, facial fur, male grooming, anything like that, you can contact us at 347-333-1511. If you're outside of the United States, please dial 001 first, and that would be 001-347-333-1511. Come on, people. We're looking for some questions to answer on air, so give us a shout today. Also, if you're a little shy and not into leaving a message, you can also email us, and we will read that question on air, and air is in quotes because this is a podcast. But regardless, you can reach me at Douglas at mustacheandblade.com. That's mustache, A-N-D, and blade.com. Or Ryan at mustacheandblade.com. Also, if you are a Twitterer, (laughs) I think I may have made that word up, please go to mustacheandblade.com, which will bring you to a pre-populated tweet that we've taken the liberty of filling out for you. And it's just really to get the word out that you're listening to your new favorite wet shaving podcast, mustache and blade please help us get the word out we're having so much fun doing this and we want to continue doing this and in order to continue doing this we need you to be doing this and this being getting the tweet out so please mustache and blade.com and now time for another shower shave review and welcome back to another shower shave review however that title is a little misleading today in today's case i will not be sharing a review from the shower with you. Boo, I know, I know what you're thinking, it's sad. No, today I'm actually be talking about the shave I did have in the shower. And that being said, maybe we'll just make it into a little tutorial. If any of you listening have a hollow handled razor, get it out, get it out right now. Uh, A hollow razor is great. If you haven't already done this, you should do it right now with me. It's great to add weight to. It'll really change the balance point. The fulcrum point is what we call that. And in a lot of cases, this is a good thing. One, because it just, it changes the reaction time slightly, depending on the grip too. This razor handle that I'm using is an MR3. It's from Maggard's, Maggard's Razors. And it's a fat three inch long, beefy little handle that's hollow and perfect for this experiment. And what I did was, you know, out of the box, it's already got some heft to it. It's got a nice weight. It really wants to do the work for you. So I like that. It's also got this thatched handle grip, which is perfect for someone who shaves in the shower. You don't have to worry about dropping it. Not that I've ever dropped anything in there, but some of you are a little more butterfinger than others, I, I suppose. So this might be something to look for and to consider. So the MR3 handle I chose, three inches long, hollow. What to put inside of this to add some weight? I chose BBs. I added 20 grams to the handle, to the already heavy handle. And 20 grams of BBs is approximately 57 BBs. So if you have BBs, I'm going to keep saying BBs. If you have BBs, grab them now. Count out 57 if you don't have a scale. If you do have a scale, weigh them out. And start dropping them in the handle. Unscrew the cap, drop them in the handle. The handle, the cap on the handle is also hollow. So I recommend filling it up to the thread line inside the handle, and then put the rest inside the cap, the hollow cap, and then screw it on sideways so you don't lose any BBs. And you've just added 20 grams. Some handles are longer than others, some are smaller than others, so it really depends on how much space you have to work for how much weight you can add to it. Again, I chose BBs. You could go to a hardware store with the handle and maybe find uh, ball bearings, some heavier weight ball bearings that 
are a little bit bigger, they might even actually fit kind of snug inside the handle. That's great too, because you don't really want it shaking around or shifting. With a razor, especially when you're doing subtle pivoting, and I'm talking about subtle stuff, this fulcrum point, with the weight added, it jumped up. It's about three quarters up the handle now, which is wonderful for small detail work around the neck, around the chin. With the grip, you can really, by barely moving your fingers, you can make adjustments to the handle. It's really, it's, it's much more intuitive in this case, in this particular handle. It's really something else. The head I chose to use was not the factory head, not the head that came with the handle, but a 1904 Merker or a Merker 1904, which is another razor I really like. I like everything about it, pretty much. The ornamental handle, it's the whole classiness of it. I can't say enough good things about the Merker 1904, and maybe some of you are laughing at me, but you know what? This, this little guy does a number on your neck. You can really get into places down there. You really get a BBS shave with a Merker 1904. That's another one of my tricks, in fact. Um, I will supplement my shave a lot of the time with that particular razor. Just for the neck area, though, that, for some reason or another, really gets in the nooks and crannies for me for the particular shape of my neck and the particular angle that of growth. The Mercury 1904 works wonders. So, yeah, a lot of the time I will chase a shave with the Mercury 1904, as well as a mustache grooming razor, either by Mercury or Besser. But back to my Franken razor. So now I have the 1904 Merker head on the Maggard MR3 handle, loaded with 20 grams of BBs. And to top it off, I have a Bolzano blade inside there. And if you haven't tried a Bolzano, try a Bolzano. I'm a feather guy myself, so this seemed like a logical leap for me. Some of you are not fans of feathers. Fair enough. After all, your miles may vary with any of these things. So find the blade of your choice. Find the head of your choice. You know, you can use a Gillette Tech. Any three-piece razor head will fit on this Maggard handle. And it doesn't necessarily need to be this particular handle. Although I do love this handle and highly recommend that everyone try it. So experiment with the weight of your razor and see what a difference it makes. Now, that being said, this may become your daily razor, your Franken razor. And that's a good and it's a bad thing. For those of us who like to switch it up a lot for our shave of the day photos, once you get used to this weight, it might be hard to go back. And if it's your first time experimenting with a razor with the weight, remember it has added weight and heft to it now. So you don't have to use the same amount of pressure you would for your other razors. With the added weight, especially if you have sensitive skin, the added weight will also make a difference. You can let the handle apply the pressure for you just by slightly tilting your face and letting the handle at the fulcrum point, let the head of the razor drop down and with just a little bit of pressure, less than you would normally use, you let the razor and gravity do the work for you. It wants to shave your face. It wants to cut the hair. It does not want to cut you. Don't add any more pressure to it. Experiment with that, but you'll see what I mean. It's tough really to put into words how to do this properly. But once you have it in your hands and you hold it like a pencil, you can really get a feel for the control or the new control you'll now have. I recommend you find the fulcrum point on any razor you buy. And that can easily be done. You can just stick out your pointer finger or index finger and just balance the razor on there. Find where that point of balance is on the handle where it is completely level. And right from there, you want to grip right below that. And again, going from a pencil grip, which you're holding it at, just to feel the weight of it, now release the pencil grip and you're just holding it with your index and your thumb. And a little below that point is where you now want to be. And you will find that you gain so much more control over your razor when you find the fulcrum point. That's my shower shaving review tip of the day. People, get out there, get experimental with your razors. You don't need to stick with just one brand of razor. You can create a Franken razor. You can create a hybrid. You can find something that works specifically for your face and go with it. So go experiment. These handles are cheap enough. They're brass. They're not going to rust. They're solid. They're going to last forever. Find a good hollow handled razor. I highly recommend the MR3 razor. So get out there and make me proud. <laughs> Thanks again for listening to another Shower Share Review with Douglas Smythe. And now to you, Mantic. Mantic 59 here. And this is your Mustache and Blade podcast shaving tip. Have you ever wondered why shaving cuts can bleed so much? It's because you didn't hurt yourself bad enough. When a cell in the body is damaged, components of that cell that normally serve some unrelated purpose inside the cell act as damage signals once outside the cell. When these come out, they help trigger repair pathways. One of these signals is an aggregation of platelets that will eventually lead to a blood clot. Another part cause muscle rings around the entrances to capillary beds to constrict, shutting off blood flow. In a razor cut, few cells are actually broken open, so fewer damage signals get sent. In a more blunt trauma, say a skin knee, you get a lot more of the damage signals released. Think of it in simple terms. 
The clotting system is set up to do nothing as long as blood knows nothing but blood vessels. Show blood anything other than a blood vessel, and it clots. Do you want to know more about how to turn shaving from a painful chore into a pleasant diversion? Watch my video channel at youtube.com slash user slash mantic59. So here at Mustache and Blade, we receive emails. And today's email is from a young bloke named Josh, a noob like myself. And he's asked that I would record a series of wet shaving acronyms for the edification of our listening audience. But before I do, I want to challenge our listening audience, that is you. Um, I was thinking about David Letterman. David Letterman receives letters. And as you know, if you watch David Letterman, he has a little jingle to go along with his letters segment. It goes a little like this. Letters. We've got letters. We've got lots and lots of letters. 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 Something like that. My challenge is this, oh listener. Come up with a jingle for Mustache and Blade and our emails segment. If your jingle is accepted, Doug and I will record it properly, and we will play it on our shows when we feature emails from our listening audience. Okay, back to Josh. Josh asks if I would record a series of wet shaving acronyms. So, on the website, howtogrowmustache.com, there is a long list, a litany, so to speak, a cornucopia, a plethora of wet shaving acronyms. For our current purposes, I will pick five and provide their definitions. Are you ready? Here we go. Number five, SC. Now, up until this moment, that acronym meant something different to me as I went to the University of Southern California. But no longer does SC stand for my alma mater. SC stands for shaving cream. Number four, C W S, cold water shave. Not very exciting, either the acronym or, or the process. I've tried it. Uh, number three, SS. Now, if this were 70 years ago, SS would have a far different meaning than it does today, which is now Gillette Super Speed. Now, why the acronym is not GSS, I don't know, but such is the case. SS stands for Gillette Super Speed. Number two, XT. G. This is not the MMA training grounds on the down the block from your house. XTG stands for across the grain. Number one, are you ready for it? Let's have a drum roll. MWF. Mitchell's Wolfpack. There you have it, folks. Wet shaving acronyms from yours truly, the noob, Ryan Stephen Green. And now, on to Mr. Fine. And now we'd like to bring Todd Saremi, Mr. Fine, onto the show. How are you doing today, Todd? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. It's great to have you on board. And um, let's see. I guess the best place to begin would be, <laughs> ironically enough, the beginning. That being said, what was your shave of the day, Mr. Fine? Well, I'll tell you, we may get into this in a little bit greater detail later, but I'm not a big fan of the extra moisturized, super treated uh, skin right away when you're doing a shave. I found that, uh, you know, if I use hot water and I do a lot of uh, steam towels or anything like that, I get a lot of irritation. So my shave almost every day is uh, more of an al dente uh, approach. You know, I do do it after I take a shower. So I imagine I have some softening, but I dry my skin, towel dry, as, as dry as I can get it. I lather on the uh, parasso. You know, for me, it just gives me the best results. Um, I don't apply any water between passes. I sometimes will follow up with a lump, but not always. And uh, then, of course, I top things off with a little bit of the fine aftershave, um, which today and 
Most recently, over the last couple of weeks, I've been using the Fresh Vetiver, which does not get as much attention as I think it deserves. My American blend probably outsells it 10 to 1, but you know, I think it's just such a great scent. It's a very fresh scent, a very modern take on uh, on uh, Vetiver, which is something that a lot of guys are not familiar with, but is such a uh, versatile and wonderful scent and fresh vetiver is a really great introductory to the uh to the aroma i agree i'm actually smelling the bottle right now and uh as am i huge fan of vetiver and uh, the woodsy smell i really yeah i like this and i think part of the problem or it might not even be a problem at all is just the labeling difference i think the american blend is more it's, it's kind of catches your eye it's got that it speaks to your your classic side really with that barber pole patriotic thing almost going on so I, that could be it right there i don't think people realize what they're missing <laughs> this is some great stuff well, i think that's true and uh you know i i've been with it from the beginning obviously and i just found that you know it's funny the way things take off i sent out samples of all my mm-hmm. scents to 10 guys and it just took you know two of them that just love the american blend and from there you know they left some commentary and everyone just started buying the american blend based off of that <laughs> and, uh, you yeah. know, there's there has been some people that have really enjoyed the fresh bed of ear and gotten back to me and told me how much they love it, but they haven't been as public about it. And, uh, you know, maybe people don't know, but that classic sort of Barbasol look on that uh, American blend label does, it, does uh, yeah. attract your eye. Well, you know, let's go public with it right now and let me say that of the four samples that you sent to me, fresh bed of ear was by far my favorite. Oh, great. So there. Right, right. It's lovely. It's absolutely lovely. And who knew that vetiver was was ab- actually grass? Is that right? That's where the scent actually comes from? Yeah, it's an, it's an Indian grass and uh, it's uh, the scent is in the roots. And it's uh, it's actually they use the grass for other purposes. But the main purpose is that that amazing aroma um, that uh, that you get from it. And, you know, maybe a more advanced approach to uh, vetiver would be the uh, Guerlain vetiver, which is a cologne that I just adore. Mm-hmm. But I cannot find an oil or a blend of oils to really match it in any way, shape or form. But I I love it as a, as a cologne on top of fresh vetiver. It's a much darker scent. The fresh vetiver is the, uh, the, the rainmaker executive. Guerlain vetiver owns the firm. You know, he's the, he's the head honcho. So it's a, <laughs> it's a little bit of a different take on vetiver, but it's just as good. Now, there are a couple other scents here that you make. And based on the description of your shave of the day, namely the al dente nature of it, I would assume that you you would turn to the Italian aftershave more often than not. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, the Italian is a, is a great scent too, but uh, it's more of a summer thing, you know? And uh, in these winter months here, I tend to gravitate to a little bit different type of uh, uh, product, I guess. Um, the citrus aspect of it just makes me feel like a summer day, and I don't necessarily uh, get that feeling in the morning when there's snow on the ground. No, I agree. I'm actually smelling your Italian. <laughs> that sounds funny. And um, <laughs> and some Razor Rock XX, and it complements that really well, too. I don't know if people are already hip to that or not, but just so you folks know that Razor Rock XX or Double X or however you want to pronounce it, maybe 20 if you're Roman, matches <laughs> this aftershave perfectly. Yeah, it's a nice balance. Yeah, I think they're both based on... Uh, Aqua de Parma type uh, scents. Yes. You know, Joe just came out with his Triple uh, X Tello soap, and I've got some in the mail right now, and I'm looking forward to uh, trying <laughs> it with the uh, with the Italian citrus uh, aftershave. I'm certain if, if it's anything like the XX, it's going to work just fine. <laughs> Get it? Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's good to hear the developer's shave of the day. I think it really it humanizes you and uh, makes everyone realize that you are going through the same shave of the day situations that we all do except you're only choosing between four four cents maybe no i'm i'm always sampling you should see my uh, my shave den i can imagine and aftershave has always been my my favorite part of the wet shaving process you know the the smell and the feel it just combines to be such a i think a rewarding experience i hope we can talk about it a little bit more but I know a lot of guys, you've mentioned it in the past, uh, bomb guys or oil after the shave. And I can I can appreciate that. And I know uh, one of your previous guests, uh, Ian, was saying uh, you got to be a masochist to use uh, alcohol based aftershaves. (laughs) What is your reply to that? (laughs) Well, you know, I'll tell you. Alcohol and uh, actually menthol is the main thing. It's it's very close to the experience you get from hot peppers. 
It's just the exact opposite. There's a chemical in hot peppers that activates the uh, heat sensors in your skin and, and on your tongue. There's no actual heat. Um, it's just, it's in your brain, you know, the, the, the receptors in your skin pick it up. And menthol does the exact same thing, except for it does it to the cold sensors. Right. There's no actual cool, you know, you couldn't measure it with a thermometer. Um, but I also think that it's similar type of people who enjoy hot peppers and who enjoy uh, a cooling aftershave. Um, <laughs> and I've actually read some studies on this where there's a group called uh, Sensory Explorers, and they're generally risk takers, and they just like to experience different sensations. And uh, it is a very unique sensation. And if you're a if you're a hot pepper fan, maybe you're a uh, menthol or alcohol-based <laughs> uh, aftershave fan as well. You just don't know it yet. Yep. <laughs> so there is maybe a, a form of masochism to it. I mean, it, within all the animals within the animal kingdom, including ourselves, if you taste something spite, that's nature's way of saying back off, but we go right in for it. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's yeah. self defense. Maybe we should use the word curiosity. <laughs> <laughs> no, I Wrong actually look, I actually looked up masochism after I heard in, the interview with Ian and I'm like, does that really apply? And, you know, the answer might be yes. <laughs> Well, there's the sting aspect that Ian was commenting on. But then the other aspect that I'm curious about is the drying out. And I see that you've even highlighted it on the Etsy store is that it does dry and sanitize the skin. Talk about that aspect. I guess maybe it's certain skin types that maybe can't ha handle alcohol after the shave. It dries them out too much or something. But for you, I guess that effect works? Well, uh you know, alcohol is the other cooling aspect, um, and that cooling is is a result of the evaporation process. Alcohol evaporates at a lower temperature uh, than water, and evaporation, the actual state change from a liquid to a gas, which is what evaporation is, takes energy, and that energy comes in the form of heat. So it actually removes heat, and that is something that you can measure with a thermometer. There, there is an actual cooling going on, um, and that removal of heat and the removal of water does create uh, a drying effect. But what, what I found is the majority of the moisturizing that's necessary due to shaving, you know, rubbing that blade across your skin is taken care of with the soap, uh, you know, a tallow or a glycerin soap. You can, you can splash on some aftershave on top of that when you're done and you still feel that moisturizing that comes from the tallow or the, or the glycerin. I don't think it removes it. Um, it's not going to add any additional moisturizing, but I really like the comments um, that I heard from Craig the Barber on your most recent podcast about, <laughs> uh, hey, if you're doing it right, you know, you're not going to have any irritation that you need to treat. You know, you're not going to have problem skin. And and if you're doing the, the shaving part correctly and you're not applying too much pressure and you're using a solid soap product and a brush, you know, your skin should be should be just fine and, and able to <laughs> able to handle uh, an aftershave splash. And not only that, it's just so enjoyable, um, you know, <laughs> even if it even if it was poison, which I don't think, I, you know, I don't think anybody is having What's going to happen? I mean, is your face going to fall off? I, I don't think so. Uh, the worst case scenario just isn't that bad. And hey, you know, it's like there's nothing better than a cigar after a big dinner. Um, and it just <laughs> it just feels great. And, and it's such a sensation. You know, I'd hate to see guys miss out on it because they're worried about what's a very minimal, I think, uh, health issue. If it's bad for the body, it's great for the soul. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Right. There you go. I couldn't have said it better. I mean, I guess it all comes down to, uh, you know, your, your miles may vary. And if it works, for, if you're doing something that's working for you, by all means, stick with it. If not, then you need to change it up. Yeah. No, I think I know it case. works for me. I'm not an aftershave guy in uh, no disrespect. I'm more of a moisturizer guy. And that's what works for me. Alcohol, yeah, just it, it tends to dry me out. I have sensitive skin. So, you know, menthol. Menthol is an absolutely amazing substance. It's actually <laughs> it's actually an alcohol itself uh, in a in a solid form. Yeah, and it, it 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 chemically triggers those receptors that we talked about earlier. But it's also uh, partially an anesthetic. It's a local anesthetic mm. and a painkiller. Um, so w when you put that into a shave product, I just think it 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 it, it brings it together in a way that I really love. It does. Although if you add too much to a shave product, uh, the shave product being soap, you're going to kill lather. It's a lather kill. 
Oh, no kidding. You should have seen my shave last night. I test all my own soaps. And uh, one I'm working on right now called Freezer Burn. <laughs> yeah, I had a little too much burn. And I'm like lathering up my soap. And it's just not doing what it normally does. And it just killed the lather. So I had to cut it with more soap afterwards. Very interesting. Yeah, and that. pull back on the menthol. So it's really, it's a, it's a balancing act if you're going to get that burn and still a slick, cushy like lather. And uh, I don't think a lot of people know that. I mean, I, I've been reading a lot about these different menth- mentholated soaps out there right now that are, you know, killer burn and all that jazz. But I'm wondering how the lather is. I guess I need to pick some up to see what they're doing. But if you overload that with with uh, menthol crystals, you're going to get this hard block that's not going to lather properly. Hmm. At least in the vegan in, in vegan soaps, anyways. I don't know how it would react with tallow. I don't do that, so I'm, I can't give you an educated opinion on that one. Well, I'm obviously uh, not a soap maker, but you know, I've I've done a lot of experimentation with the level of menthol in aftershaves, and mm-hmm. there is a point where it is no longer enjoyable. It will yeah. actually make your eyes water. Yes, and, and, I was uh, there last night. <laughs> ah, there you go. So so I've had to uh, you know cut it back to a point where it doesn't do that obviously but still gives you the uh that nice cooling effect i thought it was great how uh rick from brush brush and soap and blade podcast he described his experience with menthol i think he was using Carasso as distracting <laughs> it's oh, just no it's kidding. not it's not his thing you know it's like anything else you know so it's not so he found it a very distracting shave he was working he was always thinking about was the mentholated effect on his face and getting it off as quick as possible so it took away from his experience of the shave Interesting. Yeah, you know, it's it's just different different strokes for different folks. But yeah, I thought that was interesting too, and I can relate to that. But I also think it might have to do with time of year. It's cold right now, at least where I'm at. So <laughs> in the summertime, yeah, laugh it up, Ryan. In the summertime, <laughs> Mr. L.A. over there. But in the summertime, I think it would be much more of a refreshing experience, so on and so forth. You know, I, I do hear that, but me, I like it. All year round. And I'll tell you what, <laughs> you wouldn't believe uh, the rate I go through Tabasco sauce, too. So uh, I, uh, I'm i coming at it from both ends. Honestly, I'm a hot sauce guy. I love it. It can't get hot enough for me. Uh, I collect them, as most people do when they're traveling and so on. Sure. You know, I'm into that. But the menthol thing, yeah, again, I like it. I just don't like it so potent. I have an aftershave lotion that I've made, a mentholated one. I think it's great. It works as a muscle rub as well. And that's great. You know, when I get out of the gym, I put that on. I feel refreshed. I feel anew. But brushing that soap at least last night's experience with the the balance I was using of menthol didn't work for me. Now, there's another version that I make of it that I like, but this time of year, it's a little off for me. I prefer uh, when it comes to a scent or a feel, but I can't wait for summer or spring to get here to really you know bust it out and go get all mentholated, maybe smoke some mentholated cigarettes. There you go. Use some Puffs Plus menthol and take a Vicks uh, cough drop and see what happens. My head will Cooled explode. Cooled on the inside <laughs> and the outside. <laughs> and that's sexy, ladies and gentlemen. This man is cool. 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 What I do appreciate about, and this is another thing, with menthol shaving products in the wintertime or the fall is cold and flu season. That's where I, I see you can really whip it out and, you know, have a, a sinus clearing effect. You know, now you're, you're working with what you got going on. So... That, that classic uh, Vicks Vapor Rub. Exactly. Enter the yeah. halls of medicine. And uh, yeah. so I like that. You know, I will be, next time I get a cold, I will be checking that that out and taking note. I think another interesting aspect of uh, menthol, as long as we're going into it here, obviously, <laughs> is, uh, uh, you know, I think a lot of the soap makers, I don't know what uh, scent uh, you were pairing with it, but, you know, everyone goes towards the mint and the pem- peppermint. Um, and menthol is actually an en- an en- uh, an extract of of peppermint oil. Um, but what I found through this process of what I've been doing is it works with a lot of other scents. Oh yeah, it, you know. And I've I've really been looking for a for a a, a scented soap that's not peppermint, um, but still contains uh, the menthol. And I just don't see too much of it outside of uh, Corasso. It's Interesting. I actually do. I pair it with peppermint, eucalyptus, and tea tree because I'm going more for that sensation too, that effect. Interestingly enough, I actually created a mentholated body soap, which I haven't been able to find out there yet. I don't know. Is anyone selling a mentholated body soap? I haven't seen them. But that is that is something else. I'll bet. <laughs> Skin just comes to life there. I know American blend, Amer- not American blend, uh, American crew, they make the shampoo for men. Oh, yeah. They have a uh, a shampoo with uh, I don't know if it's menthol or just the tea, tea tree. tree. It's but, tea tree. 
Yeah, that uh, tingles your head. Oh, I, yeah. I love it. I love it. There's a couple shampoos out there, out there that hit it or miss it completely, but I look for the tea tree ones that you get that tingle. I really, I love that. Something I'd always love to recreate, too. Especially, that's what I'm going for in the body soap, at least. You know, I, I, I don't want to talk about me anymore. I don't know how this even happened, but <laughs> let's <laughs> bring it back to Mr. Fine here. And let's just really, let's get down to the nitty gritty here. How did this all, you know, how did this all come to be? Todd, how did you get into making aftershave splashes? And before we do uh, touch upon that, what is the difference between aftershave and a splash? Or is it one of the same? Is it interchangeable? It's interchangeable. Um, you know, there there's guidelines out there about what constitutes uh, a splash uh, versus a cologne. Uh, but usually a splash and an aftershave are basically interchangeable as far as the percentage of fragrance in the product. Okay. Uh, when you get into a cologne, it's generally a higher percentage. And technically, you might say that my uh, my product is actually in the cologne range. Um, if you're over three percent, you might be considered a cologne. Oh. Okay. Um, but it's you know there's no hard and fast rule, and this is intended to use as an aftershave, not a cologne necessarily. But. Right. You know, you asked how it got started, and it got started because of one product, and that's Alt Innsbruck. Um, that's oh, the, right, right. Yeah, the Austrian um, aftershave. You know, I, I told you already that the aftershave was always my very favorite part of the process, and and my collection of aftershave is just enormous. And uh, at one point, I uh, I decided to try Alt Innsbruck, and it just blew me away. I mean, I had tried dozens of aftershaves, and I had this, I used Alt Innsbruck and it just, I loved it. I loved the scent. I loved the, the menthol. Um, and when I, I, you know, it's 30 bucks a bottle, you know, right, and right. Uh, uh, more with shipping. And, and and when I found out it had four ingredients, which I actually knew ahead of time. <laughs> and I was like, hey, you know, I can, why can't I just make this stuff? Um, exactly. And, uh, you know, I experimented for months and months and months trying to get it right. And I was really focused on that tobacco scent that Alt Innsbruck is really so famous for. And I tried all kinds of uh essential oils from every vendor I could find literally all over the world. And I just could not replicate that to bat tobacco scent that they had. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I put it on the shelf for a long time. Um, but, uh, but doing more research, I eventually came across fragrance oils and, and I started thinking, well, Hey, you know, it's just a different type of oil. There's no reason that recipe shouldn't work just because the oil's a different scent. Let's let's see what I can find. And you know, I found these fragrance oils uh, that are sold by vendors all over the internet. Um, and uh, I had also done a lot of research on different uh, colognes, um, which is kind of a, a side story. I, may get into. But, mm -hmm. you know, I had a a, a, a lineup of, of barbershop scented colognes that I really enjoyed, but they were, they're really expensive. You know, these were the high end things that are costing you 60 bucks a bottle for the name brand aftershave. And, and I didn't want to spend that either on a regular right. basis. So I got the fragrance oil. I put it in with the other three ingredients, the, uh, the alcohol, the water and the menthol. And it was like, voila, it was like, this is, this is amazing. This is, this is just like Alt Innsbruck, but it has the same sense that I've been paying $60 a bottle for. And it's got that Alt Innsbruck feel, which, you know, because it doesn't have any moisturizers in it or any uh, other mystery products, mystery ingredients, it just gives you this clean, clean feel. Um, and uh, so I got the same clean feel, the same menthol, just with a different scent. And in a lot of ways, it's a scent that people actually like better. Alt Innsbruck is very... Uh, Oh, distinctive. And a lot of people just do not like it. Um, I, like, <laughs> I obviously liked it a lot, but but it's not for everyone. And I think no. uh, the scents I'm using are actually more approachable um, yeah, no, I agree. Uh, to a novice sort of uh, frag head. Alt in Innsbruck, for a while, I thought it was a computer command. <laughs> 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 yeah, that was a bitch to try to pull off. <laughs> I don't have enough fingers. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, you know, so I, I – I had this product that I created myself and I was using it um, every day. And I'm, I'm an entrepreneur, really. Um, yeah. I, I This is one business that I have. I have another business that's more related to my prior career. But uh, I said, hey, you know, why not give it a shot? Let's put this thing on the market and see if people like it. And and they did. You know, I think a lot of the guys, I mean, I, I can look at my uh, my stats on uh, uh, who's buying my product and on, oh, yeah. uh, from Google and look at the age groups. And it's younger guys, you know, and I think Reddit is my primary uh, outlet for uh, uh, new 
new customers and you know it's a younger demographic and i think a lot of these guys have not necessarily tried uh colognes in the past it's not something that's really culturally hip uh, I don't think, you know, there's a certain group of guys that are really into cologne f- from a young age. Right. But I think I think a lot of these guys are getting into shaving before they're getting into fragrances. And uh, so th- my product might be the first time that they try something that's really a fragrance, um, not just, you know, the the chemical stuff you get at the, at, at the grocery store. Right. Um, and uh, I think that's a lot of the reason why guys are like, whoa. What is this stuff? You know, this <laughs> this smells amazing. And uh, they're not uh, they're just not used to fragrances of that quality and that complexity. When I was growing up, it was all about colognes. I mean, I remember the Old Spice, Drakkar, all those. And this was like, you know, freshman year of high school, getting into all these different colognes. Does anyone else know what I'm talking about out there? <laughs> <laughs> I know what you're talking about. I just think uh, the Drakkar. There was there was a lull. There was a lull there, you know, and I yeah. think there was nothing really that came in after Dracar that I know of that was that popular. Yeah, it was really popular. I hated it, but it was really popular. I was more of an Old Spice type of guy at 15. <laughs> Dracar was like that 99 cent store item that my grandma would always put in my stocking at Christmas Oh, that wasn't real Dracar then if it was 99 cents. Uh, that stuff was like 25 bucks a bottle, I believe. Or it would be like, you know, it would be uh, like a tiny little like, you know, if it were candy, it would be called like the fun size. <laughs> <laughs> What's fun about a tiny piece of candy? I've never understood that. <laughs> well, it's funny. I mean, maybe I'm projecting my own experience, but I never used cologne. I actually hated it. I mean, oh, I really I would walk by guys at the bar, you know, in college and they'd have this strong scent on them. And mm-hmm. I'm just like, what are they doing? <laughs> um, and and when I was trying to uh, to uh, when I was getting into aftershave and I found out that aftershave is really just a diluted cologne. Mm-hmm. Um, and I started I started saying, well, hey, if I like aftershave so much. I must really, you know, there must be a lot of colognes out there that I'm not aware of. They're basically the same thing. Um, so that's kind of how I started my journey. For I, I walked into it from aftershave and got into the more high end colognes in search of an even better fragrance. And uh, and lo and behold, there were some out there. But still, when I put on a cologne, um, I just was not comfortable with the level of projection. Yeah, you know, it, it was just too much. Um, even though I love the scent, I, I was uncomfortable that people were smelling it. And I was, you know, putting on airs or something or, you know, yeah. I, I just didn't like it. Whereas the aftershave is just closer to the skin. Nobody's going to nobody's going to smell that unless they're in your real direct space giving you a hug or something um and I like that a lot better. Right. Subtle. Yeah. As far as wet shaving goes, how long have you been into traditional style of wet shaving? Well, you know, for the longest time I was just a regular you know foam sure. cream and plastic razor guy. Um but I guess you could call me uh, one of the uh, Corey Greenberg generation uh, wet shavers. <laughs> you guys know who Corey Greenberg was? Corey Greenberg? Yeah. He, he was, was the first, first Jewish basketball player, right? <laughs> <laughs> he was a tech editor for the Today Show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know how I missed that one. <laughs> uh, you were close, Doug. You are close. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you would never know it unless you're kind of uh, nerdy, I guess, which I uh, kind of lean towards the geek side. But, uh, you know, I I read tech stuff and this guy's a tech editor and he did a story in 2005 that got a lot of traction. I mean, it was one of the, it was like a viral story for men, I think, about um, wet oh, shaving no and all the traditional products and the benefits of uh, of using a, a DE razor. And um, I read that and it just... It just jumped off the page at me, especially because I come from the finance industry and I'm always looking for ways that, uh, you know, marketers and companies are are separating you from your money that uh, that don't make sense. Right. Um, it's just in my nature. And I read about this article about how you get a better shave for less money. It was like, wow, I got to try this. <laughs> so, you know, and then uh you know, I, I went on eBay, I bought a vintage Gillette and I just started using it. I had no instruction or anything. Um, I just went out and started using it on my own. And I did it that way for, for several years. And then it, actually this, this, uh, Corey Greenberg, he, he subsequently went on the today show and did a segment on wet shaving and it's on YouTube if you want to Google okay. it. And this was in, in late 2006. And I think, you know, that article and that, that, segment on the Today Show just brought wet shaving to a much wider audience of which, you know, I was one of them. And um, 
Um, but anyways, it wasn't until 2010, maybe 2009, not really that long ago, where a guy I work with, we just happened to come up in conversation uh, that we both use DE razors. And he's like, he's like, hey, I just bought this book from uh, from uh, Leisure Leisure guy. Guy. Yep, it's classic. Yeah. And. And I was like, uh, you know, no kidding. Uh, what's it about? He's like, it's about how to shave. And I'm like, well, I shave, I shave every day. I use a DE razor. What do I need to know? And uh, he's like, well, just check it out. So I, I read that thing and I was like, whoa, mm-hmm. there is a, I, I was doing a single pass, you know, with the grain. Yep. I, I didn't know you're supposed to do multiple. Nobody ever tells you that stuff, at least not in today's culture. And uh, I was like, whoa, you're multiple passes <laughs> and uh, all these different products that I didn't even know about. And uh, then I then it was just, uh, you know, a snowball. Mm -hmm. It was like, wow, this is a whole nother world. I had no idea about. I went on Reddit, Wicked Edge. I've been a Wicked Edge subscriber for, you know, probably back to then 2009 when there was uh, 2000 people following the, the subreddit. And, uh, you know, I've just watched it grow and gotten great ideas and, you know, been on Badger and Blade a lot. And My buddies. <laughs> yeah. So it all it all came into uh, it all came together with actually having a, a product designed for this niche. Your, your story sounds very familiar to a, a lot of guys peddling their wares right now. Well, I, I feel kind of honored just because, you know, being invited to this podcast, <laughs> a lot of the guys you've had are, you know, real old school guys been doing it for decades and decades. And I'm probably one of the first that are, you know. That uh, Corey Greenberg generation, you know, just since 2005, you know, once you discover this, it's just, oh, yeah. it's just something you fall in love with. And you fall into it. It's a, it's a, it's a rabbit hole. <laughs> it is. Well, I actually, I actually think there's much, there's broader cultural themes that are driving this, this growth in this, in this practice, especially from the young people, um, you know, being from the investment business, which I kind of uh, commented on earlier, I- I'm all about trend analysis. You know, when you're making an investment, you've got to look out at the long term and make sure it's a solid investment. You've got to, you've got to understand the industry and the growth drivers. And when I, when I look at the, the uh, traditional shaving practice and the growth of it recently, I think the drivers of it are mm-hmm. huge. Um, are you familiar with a book uh, called The Fourth Turning by any chance? The fourth Turning. Is is that a marketing book? No, it's a, it's a, well, it could be used as a marketing book, but it's not specific. It's a study. It's actually basically a study. Um, what's the name? The guy's name is Strauss. Levi Strauss? Um, and no, not Levi. Uh, uh, Oh, I don't remember his name off the top it of my head. It sounds familiar. But, well, I mean, what, I can't really. It... Maybe when I explain it, it'll ring a bell. But basically, they they're kind of like sociologists, um, and they looked at the uh, the baby boom generation versus the uh, the GI generation or the greatest right. generation, and they said, "Hey, what? How is it possible that these two generations from the same country, relatively close in age, you know, not that far apart, have such completely different ways of looking at the world and and through further research, they basically found that there's a almost like a trend, a, a cyclical aspect to generations where over the course of a, a single human lifetime, maybe 80 or 90 years, there's four distinct generations. And each one of those generations has a different way of looking at the world until at the end of that fourth generation, you get a major turnover where the the institutions of the previous four generations are basically thrown out the window and it happened it happens over and over again you know most recently for for us we're the, the millennials um the people that I think are my main customers people born 2000 and later um or uh, not 2000 uh Oh, I don't know. 91. But anyways, the millennials. This generation yeah, Y? Uh, the I millennials. Guess so. Yeah, they would be the uh, that fourth generation in a cycle. Um, going back to that right. you know, the baby, the generation X before them, the baby boomers before them, and then the GI generation, the greatest generation before them. And the last crisis was World War II um, and, uh, you know, the Great Depression. So then the, the cycle starts starts over again. And then you go back 80 years prior to that or so, you've got uh, the uh, the American Revolution uh, or the Civil War. I'm sorry, the Civil War, uh, which was four generations prior to Oh, that's World so War interesting. II. I know every 80 years, there's a, I, I read this recently. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's And then you go to the Revolutionary back, War 80 years before that. You go to the Revolutionary yeah, War cyclical. and then you- That's, yeah. Yeah, you- You've got something called the First Indian War prior to that. And then these are major upheavals in culture. 
And I, you know, and I think we're going through that right now. I think the the millennials are basically disregarding these these old institutions. And I think, you know, just shaving is one little slice of this where they're saying, why? Why are we doing mm-hmm. it this way? Um, just because our parents did it that way doesn't mean it's the best way. And they're doing it with with financial institutions, with money, yeah. you know, I'm a big Bitcoin advocate, <laughs> you know, I don't know if you guys are familiar with that, but it's a whole new way of looking sure. at money. Um, and, and just these big institutions are being turned over. Um, and I think this is a lot, this is a piece of that, you know, um, not doing it the way that, uh, everyone else did it before trying to actually find a, a better way. And, uh, so I think we're in the, we're in that sort of crisis mode right now and who knows what'll turn out on the other side of it. Very interesting. I was just watching a documentary recently that probably drew from the work of, uh, the fourth turning, which I see now is by William Strauss and Neil Howe. There you go. It's all, it's often called, I think the Strauss Howe theory. Cyclical. Yeah, no, I, I definitely, I, right last week I was just looking at something a completely different documentary on a whole nother subject definitely ties in with what you're saying. <laughs> and I think that's really interesting. And, you know, and a part of it too, you're saying a lot of young guys are coming your way, picking up your stuff for the first time. That could also be that them turning to wet shaving is another form of a uh, rebellion for them, you know, against maybe what dad does. You know, I like, you know, I'm going to figure this out for myself. What's this? Well, in a sense, but you know, I just think it's better. Of course, you know, it's just better. <laughs> it's just better from from every it sells aspect. Itself. And I think, yeah, and this 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 newest generation is is kind of a a seeker for that yep. kind of thing. Um, as the uh, you know the GI generation before them, they were the they were the they were the the generation that you know were so solid and had all these values and that sort of thing. And um, you know, those were very character oriented, you know, sure. people. And they were the, they were wet yeah. shavers. <laughs> you know, they, they were using those traditional shaving techniques. Um, but then you kind of see a fluctuation with, with the, uh, you know, the cultural revolution in the sixties, um, that the baby boomers did. And it was, it was a whole different exploration of, of culture. And what Strauss and Howe are saying is this is not the first time this cycle has happened. It happens over and over and over again. And, uh, typically it's that first generation that, that after a crisis, which, you know, I think we're going through a financial crisis. I think we've got a, a world war on terror. We've got nine 11, you know, we're going through a cult- cultural upheaval right now. And the, the, generation that is in the midst of that are the ones who find the new generation, the new institutions going forward for the next four cycles. And I think this could be, you know, what what's happening here. And, uh, uh, you know, I'm building a business. On yeah, it, so no, I, I, mean, I, 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 you know, I hope it grows. Yeah, no, I mean, well, we are very lucky in this generation to be able to turn back and take the best of, you know, take take what worked. From the past. And possibly more importantly, getting rid of what doesn't. Um, exactly. I mean, plastic, the, you know, the whole reason why uh, these disposal razors, I mean, plastic was was hip, you know, in the 60s, you know, plastic. I'm talking plastics um, in the 60s and 70s. And so it was like the evolution. It went on. It, it was a branch on a tree. But we realize it didn't work. <laughs> you know, that branch has died now. But let's keep, let's, let's go back on yeah. the other path and see where it goes. It seems to be working. Let's stick with that. But you know, it was a flash in the pan as far as I'm concerned. There you go. It's funny. I mean, that whole mass produced approach to, I guess, consumer products, mm-hmm. everything, you know, everything from your furniture to your razor. There's so much that, uh, you know, you can be done better. For sure. And uh, we're, we're re-exploring yeah, you know, that. I, I feel very, very grateful to be at this point in history right now. It's really, it feels good that everyone's getting on board, you know, that you're part of something. I agree. What are your thoughts on this, Ryan? Preach it, brother. <laughs> Preach it. I'm just, I'm sitting here with a wide grin on my face right now, just loving every word I'm hearing. I want to hear that. your take, Ryan. You usually, you know, add some depth to uh, my meanderings. I myself, and I find the guys that I surround myself with are kind of antiquarians, subscribe to more traditional values. So, you know, part of part of what's going on like sparks a lament in me, you know, <laughs> um, and part of what's going on, I'm like, well, you know, maybe this means that we can, you know, people like myself or, or like Doug or Wet Shavers or Charlie, who you hear, you'll hear on the show at some point, you know, maybe these type of people are the ones that carry the torch of that, you know, the kind of the traditional values, the the history of, of, of our people and where we came from and stuff like that. To me, that's of great value. You know, it's it's hard for me. I think it's something about my soul. I don't know. 
that has a hard time when everything's up in the air, everything's being reexamined and deconstructed. And well, you, Brian, you know, I don't think you're alone there. I mean, these are we're talking about painful changes yeah. here. You know, yeah. I mean, yeah. you're t- when you're talking about World War II and the Great Depression and the Civil War and the Revolutionary War, uh, it doesn't get more heavy than that. Yeah, you know, and uh, you know, we could be, we could. I, you know, I'm I'm scared of that kind of thing, frankly. Just knowing what I know about money um, as a as a financial guy, um, you know, we're living in this debt based society, and if it if it collapses, it's going to be ugly, you know. And uh, uh, I hate to think that's going to happen, but it could. Yeah. I think it's fair to say that Todd is buying gold. <laughs> <laughs> and bitcoins <laughs> and bitcoins <laughs> <laughs> but you know as as i've said and as doug and you probably know todd i'm i'm a i'm a real noob i mean if 2006 you know you feel like that oh man i don't have that much history here like this is only several months old for me at this point and it, it's weird like it's grown so rapidly in my life already, partly because Doug has thrust me into the the, the spotlight <laughs> of a podcast called Mustache and Blade, so I get samples in the mail, say from people like Mister Fine, in trying all these new things. Well, I've I've even found for myself that using this razor that's sixty years old and that's actually made out of real material that I can feel, and that's as new now as it was in 1955. These these are just like small tokens for me that I can kind of hang my hat on and go, you know what? Not everything is messed up right now. Even if it happened 60 years ago, this thing still exists and it's still useful and I can I can still apply it to my face toward a toward a uh toward an end of, you know, eliminating the hair. Um it's 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 something I can <laughs> hang my hat on, you know, that's like real. You've got a journey that's going to be unfolding in front of you that uh you, you can't even imagine how enjoyable it is really. I mean, you You've seen the difference between what you're doing now and what you've been doing, you know, up till this recent transformation for you. But it just gets oh, better, yeah. you know. I mean, I'm yeah. <laughs> I'm what se- seven eight years into doing this, and I'm still finding techniques that make my shave better. You know, it just gets better and <laughs> better. So it's uh, it's fun. It's fun. Yeah, it is. It's like a new religion. The way you described it actually just sounded like you were going into this spiritualist rant right there Todd. <laughs> but well, it is just, it's so fun that a, a a chore can be so enjoyable and yes and you never knew it you know and then when you do it's like wow and and not just is it good it just gets better yeah no you're given eyes to see yeah, <laughs> yeah. the keys to the kingdom and uh no i agree i, I and that's why i I find it our mission in life to spread the gospel of wet shaving. <laughs> facial awareness. I'm big on that for you guys. Yes. <laughs> I got my facial awareness ribbon. It's got the little stubble on it. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> nice. There are worse platforms, I suppose. <laughs> what What is it like? It, maybe scent itself is some somewhat divisive. You know, there can be too much or there can be too little. Maybe it's not that culturally hip right now that we're we're using a whole lot of scents on our person. But you've obviously found you know, great value in, in the power of scent. Could you talk a little bit about, about that? Well, it's, it's interesting. One of the reason from the beginning that I liked aftershave so much, I couldn't articulate it. You know, it's just uh, enjoyable. But as you break it down into the components, we talked about the feel, we talked about the menthol and the alcohol and uh, the feel, but the scent is a whole nother aspect of it that is so underrated, I think. And scent in general as a sense, as one of your your senses, it doesn't get the attention that really it it should. Um, and I say that because it's such a powerful sense. Um, I was just looking at some research to prepare for this uh, uh, interview. And they said, uh, based on studies, you can remember smells with 65% accuracy after a full 12 months. So you'll smell it and you'll remember something that happened 12 months ago. And and it's just such a powerful reminder of a certain experience. Um, whereas sight, after just three months, um, you only have about 50% rec- recognition, uh, uh, accuracy on your, on your, uh, recollection. So it's a whole nother level of, of experience when, when you're talking about scent. And I think that's why, uh, a lot of these barbershop scents and the soaps and all that, you know, I was listening to that interview with Craig 
the barber that you guys did. He's got that wonderful music in the background. He, he <laughs> talks in a rhythmic way. It's just such a comfortable environment. And it has these scents associated with it, the barber shop. And when you splash that on in the morning, it brings it all back. You know, it brings that 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 emotion of relaxation and and comfort um, right into your, you know, into your bathroom every day. And it's just, yep. you know, there's no better better way to start the day. I think one of the one of the things I was reading about is you can smell a crayon. A crayon is one of the most powerful scents because it brings you back to your childhood and you never forget that smell. And it's associated with this feeling of, of youth. Um, it's it's a new car smell is another thing. You know, how do you feel when you when you sit in your new car for the first time? You know, you're excited. <laughs> it's it's a it's a it's just a it's a, it's a milestone in your life. I think to get a new car, a lot of people measure things. You know, I had that car back then um, and you're purchasing something that you earned. It's a great feeling. And then when you smell it again, you get that same emotion, you know, and that, the, the new car scent, the crayon scent, it's uh, it's powerful stuff. You know, I, yeah. I think that same thing happens with aftershave. Um, so it is a neglected sense. And I think there's also some aspects to uh, to scent that don't get discussed, like, your, you know, your your nose, your your sense receptors actually in your brain. They, they have a tendency to get bored, you know, like when you you put on cologne. You might smell it for the first 10 minutes and then you don't smell it anymore. You're like, what's going on? Well, your, your, your nose kind of gets numb to it and people around you can smell it. Your wife can smell it when she, you know, kisses you before you leave in the morning. Um, but you can't. And it's the same sort of way that, you know, you walk into a bakery and you're like, wow, how can these people work here? I'd be eating all day long. Mm -hmm. Well, their, their scent gets numbed. They don't even smell it anymore after. You're sensitized. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a very, <laughs> it's, it's, it happens with scent a lot more than it happens with feel, uh, or, or even, um, other senses. You know, so yeah. it's, it's a, such a unique thing. You know, it's one of five senses that we just never, never really think about, but it has so much power over us. I, well, I'm curious, like, I, I'm curious, aside from colognes and aftershaves, do you have favorite scents just out in the world, nostalgic scents, or what are some of your fav absolutely favorite scents? Uh, the only answer to that question is kind of embarrassing. <laughs> I mean, it's funny. I mean, Cran. <laughs> well, no, I never really had favorite scents, uh, except I, it was weird when I, when I was growing up. I don't even know if I want you guys to put this on the air, frankly, but... <laughs> Dog food. <laughs> I love the scent of dog food when I was growing up. Dog food? No, I, I would take I – my mom would ask me to feed the dog and I'd go to the big bag, those giant 50-pound bags. Yeah. And I'd take a scoop out of there and I'd smell it and I was like, I just – I don't know what it was. I love that smell. And uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, But that's the only one that ever really impacted me to the point where – maybe it's because it's so weird. You know, I was like, that's a weird yeah. thing that I love it so much and it, and it stuck in my mind. That is funny. And, well, yeah, I can see that dog food sticks out for me as well. Dried dog food, gas stations, gasoline. You like Freshly that. cut grass. Freshly cut grass. Yeah. You like yeah, the, the smell of gasoline. How about it? Yeah. Consider that for your next scent there. Uh, you can call it uh, <laughs> yeah. the mustache and blade. <laughs> for the real man. <laughs> yeah, gasoline. Gasoline scent. Gasoline and gunpowder. <laughs> There's actually a, a cologne out there called Kenzie 10, and it's known for its gasoline sort of uh, top notes. Right. Yeah, and it's 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 not. I mean, I like it. Uh, not to the point where I wear it every day, but, uh, right. but it does work. There's also, a, I, I believe, no, actually, I think this was a joke, but there was a WD-40. Did you see that one? Uh, a WD-40 cologne. I think it was just a, it was a joke, an online joke. But for a while, we we're all like, really? Are they going that route? <laughs> well, being in the, in the, in the aftershave business, I get a lot of requests for some stuff, uh -huh. you know, like, uh, you know, hemp. Is a big one. I want hemp shaver oh, yeah. uh, scented aftershave. I want hops. You know, these, a lot of guys like to brew their own beer and they want the hops yeah. and whiskey. Um, Mm -hmm. I, I get requests for, and I've tried them, but I haven't been able to find any that really uh, do it for me. I get the same requests too, but it's, uh, at the same time, it's like, uh, I want to sell stuff that I I wear, I exactly. think, you know, and that I just, I can only see them getting pulled over <laughs> and that becoming an issue all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Step out of the car, and, you know, and there's a bottle of cologne on you or whatever, you know, with a big pot leaf on it. I hear you. What I find with myself in the workshop, after a day being in the lab or the workshop, I can't smell a damn thing. 
my nose is useless. You know, I have the ground coffee and whatnot. I try to go to that to clear the palate. Does it smell? Does it smell bad in your workshop? I can't smell a damn thing. But when you first get there, I mean, there's actually no, there's actually a phenomenon where if you if you're subjected to bad smells on a regular basis, like you work in a in a chemically intense environment, that your sense of smell will decline. Um, you'll you'll your brain will get to the point where it's it it just shuts down smell because it's so bad and and people who can't smell there's people who are born with with scent receptors that just aren't very good um mm-hmm. and they actually it's funny they tend to eat poorly um and very bland foods uh, because scent is a very big portion of taste as well sure um but but if you're in one of those environments <laughs> where your brain shuts down the scent receptors, um, yeah, I hope know, not. It's it, my workshop where I'm making soaps. <laughs> uh, well, there you go. I mean, but it, <laughs> it, it can it can affect scent in the rest of your life, in the rest outside world, and uh, take away from your enjoyment of things like food and uh, other more exotic scents. Right, like smoking would if you were a smoker, killing there you the go. taste buds and killing. Smoke. But no, this is more of like desensitized, like. You know, how much lavender cedar can I smell during the course of the day without it just disappearing? You know, I can't, you know, it just, or what I would do is uh, a bunch of different batches of soap. I have to label them what they are because at the end of the day, I can't tell the difference anymore. It's just wiped clean, you know? Oh, yeah. Uh, That's what I find. I don't know if it's like that with you, but making soap is a little more powerful. You know, the hot process, it permeates. It's everywhere. Well, back back in the day when I was really exploring these scents, I mean, I've got my favorites now and I've got a couple more Mm -hmm. in the pipeline, uh, a lavender and more of just a barbershop scent that I hope to come out with not in the not too distant future. But I would order samples, you know dozens at a time <laughs> and you can mm. you can smell the first three and then after that exactly it's just, yeah it's you, there's <laughs> nothing there and that actually brings us back to the whole marijuana thing i love like uh reading about these marijuana festivals i don't know if it's high times that has the the cannabis cup but it's like how are these guys judging that stuff after the first two batches of whatever you're trying are you really going to be able to tell the difference? <laughs> <And it's> a, <laughs> yeah, I, I'm sure there's a correlation there. I don't know where. Yeah, that is a that is a good question. But it's the same thing. Yeah, with samples, you know, once you go to the first three, you can't smell anything anymore. At least for myself. But yeah, I do find coffee does help. Smelling uh, freshly ground coffee cleans, you know, cleanses the palate, to, you know, to a certain extent where I can start working with the scent again. Oh, there you. But I need to. If, you know, if I'm going to do a blend, I need to start early in the morning before anything else. At the end of the day, my nose is gone. It's shot. And that's my two cents on that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's been really great having you on the show, Todd, a.k.a. Mr. Fine. Um, I'm sure you, our listeners are really going to enjoy what you've had to say. Thank you again. Well, it's been my pleasure. And I'll tell you, when I first heard about a shaving podcast, I thought it was a crazy idea. But uh, <laughs> I've been listening ever since and enjoying every one of them. Uh, thank you. We're, we're really trying hard to get the word out there. Thank you again. We'll have to have you back real soon, Todd. Thank you. Yeah, Todd. Thank you so much, man. It's been great talking to you. Keep up the good work. Bye-bye. I don't need some fancy cologne to tell me I'm a man. I use Mr. Fine aftershaves. They cool the skin and feel great. Confidence is very sexy. Don't you think, 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 think? You have been listening to the Mustache and Blade podcast. Thanks for listening, and please leave us a review on iTunes. Almost clean shaven, but hardly clean cut. Mustache and Blade.